All right, let's get started. Um, thanks again for joining. Um, the, the topic of this webinar is trade faster and reduce credit risk. Um, it was highly requested because they're seen as opposing um, forces within the, the credit space um, with the theory that you either move really quickly and sacrifice some of your due diligence or you do the reverse and, and delay that onboarding process. Um, so what we're going to run through today is really how you can optimise both uh, doing a great due, due diligence process in terms of your credit risk um, and also doing it as quickly as possible um, to give your customer um, and your internal stakeholders within your business a really good experience. Um, my name's George Wolf. I'm the uh, Product Specialist Manager here at Creditor Watch and joining me uh, is Luke Matthews who's the Corporate Sales Manager up in Queensland. Um, and it's great to have Luke on board because I know he's very passionate about um, onboarding and uh, due diligence and he's spoken to hundreds of customers in his time here at Credit Watch. So Luke, thanks for joining. Great to have you on Thank board. You, George. Very excited to be here. Um, just quickly running through the agenda, I'm going to do an introduction. Um, and of course, if you need to ask questions throughout the, the webinar, um, you can do so in the panel on the, uh, on the webinar. You can go and ask a question and we'll try and get to it um, during the webinar or if not, we will follow up. Um, and we're also going to do a, a brief introduction or reintroduction for many of you in terms of credit or watch, um, what we are, what we are, who we are and, and some of the main changes within the business in the last 12 months in terms of products. Um, we're gonna spend a fair bit of time talking about the pain points with the traditional credit management or credit application process. Um, we're gonna review how that's typically done uh, in, in, a, in a business these days, um, generally paper, um, and we're gonna break that down in the sense of where are the pain points for both you as the business owner and uh, and, and for your customers who are trying to apply for credit. Um, then we're going to finish off with uh, an apply easy demonstration. And again, we're going to break this into two parts. Uh, one, what is the experience for your customer? How do they engage with you digitally through the, through the app? Uh, and two, how do you as the business owner or credit, credit um, person manage those applications on, as a whole? And what are the benefits to you of doing it electronically? Um, we will have a couple of polls as is customary for us during these webinars. Um, so if you would like to participate, that would be great and appreciated. Uh, next slide, please, Luke. Um, just a refresher on, on who Credit Watch is and what we do. Um, we're Australia's largest commercial bureau. Um, we have customers ranging from uh, sole traders to SMEs all the way up to ASX listed businesses. Um, we collect and share credit data across the board and we have a broad range uh, and a broad reach, um, which gives us a unique aspect in terms of the information we can provide our clients. So I uh, won't go into much more detail there, but uh, if you come looking for, for insights into credit management, you have come to the right place. Um, a couple of things that have changed for us in the past 12 months. Um, we are really excited to be able to offer our clients end-to-end um, -end credit risk management. Um, and that, that involves onboarding, which we're gonna go through in a, in a fair bit of detail today. Um, and onboarding involves things like making sure your T's and C's are signed and accurate and, and stored, um, as well as minimizing that, minimizing the risk in your business. Um, Monitoring, again, this has just been a staple of Credit Watch for a, for a long period of time. Um, and it is about once you have onboarded a customer, making sure that you are alerted proactively of any changes relating to the credit risk of that customer. So again, many of you know us for that, um, and it's a great service, which, which a lot of you use already. Um, and in recent months, we have launched a product called Credit Watch Collect, which is designed to help you automate your collections process by implementing a, a, a product which does a lot of the heavy lifting for you. It automates emails, it automates reminders, and it even uses SMS. And 
By doing so, he gives a great professional, con consistent outreach to your customers and encourages them to, to pay on time. Um, so that's just a summary, but we do encourage you to go to our website and, um, and review our products there. And please reach out if you have any questions on any of those products. Um, before we jump into the manual application process, we will just ask a poll question. Uh, should just pop up on the screen now. Uh, and it's just going to be around what is your biggest pain point in terms of onboarding credit application customers now? Hopefully that pops up in a second. There you go. We'll just go through, give you a minute to, to answer that. Okay, that's interesting. So just, yeah, perfect. So quite a resounding skew towards conducting proper due diligence and minimising loss there. So that's great to see, and we will definitely talk to that during during the demonstration of the product. Um, just going through the manual application process, and, and I, this is something we we see commonly with. We were talking to a common experience that we see when we're out talking to customers. Um, and Luke, please jump in um, every day with us. Um, so a PDF application form is typical, and it's fair to say that that's usually downloaded from customers' website or emailed to a to a customer from a credit management person. Is that right, Luke? Yeah. Look, I, I mean, commonly we we have customers that will will either have a, a link on their website to a PDF or they'll they'll send out a, uh, a PDF document or even a, a Word document, which we'll talk a little bit about shortly. Um, but I guess one of the challenges with that process is you don't know who's clicking on your, your credit app. You don't know where customers are up to, if they are accessing it through your website. You know, you might have you know, half a dozen applicants um, over the period of a week and you don't even know because they've sort of jumped in and stopped at a certain point. And, um, that can be really frustrating for businesses who are, you know, expecting to to onboard new customers quickly, but they don't even know they're applying on on the back end. Um, but certainly, um, over our time, the the Word version of a credit app is extremely dangerous um, um, for obvious reasons. You know, customers can get it, they can edit it accordingly without you knowing. Um, they can delete certain T's and C's, which is a a huge frustration for our um, customers. As George touched on, um, the themes are pretty common throughout, and I'm sure this is going to resonate with a lot of our attendees. Um, the crossing out of T's and C's, particularly if you're giving a credit app as a PDF, um, it inhibits and it delays that onboarding process. Um, and it's a frustration for both, obviously, yourself and the customer um, when, when they're crossing things out and, and leaving things off. Um, so that can be a, a huge um, delay in the process. Anything else in that space, George, the PDF application form? No, I think that, that pretty much covers it. it. It's just an added time sink and a risk to the business. Um, moving on to, to point number two there, the customer usually print this, which is a bit of an inconvenience. Um, they have to be, it's assumed they're in an office and have location to a printer. Um, and then they'll fill and they'll fill the form in manually and they'll, and they'll sign the form. Um, one of the key issues that I'm aware of here is, is they're filling it out with really often bad handwriting. That's a big problem. Um, and everyone's handwriting seems to be getting worse as we, we spend more time texting and, and typing. Um, but yeah, Luke, what else do you think is some of the issues around that completion piece? Well, look, a lot of credit applications um, are laid out differently from, from business to business, but what I'm finding is if you're leaving things open to interpretation and free text, you, you're really opening yourself up to, to error or, or, or what we call dirty data. Um, you know, a customer, um, you know, ignorance is bliss. They might think they're filling it out correctly and how they're supposed to, but they've interpreted it, interpret it in a way that, uh, that they think's right, but it's not necessarily correct on your end. So you Obviously, you'll touch on it later, but you'll find you have to go back to the customer and, and follow up on information that uh, they thought they were giving clearly, but uh, but they weren't. Um, in that space, I mean, there's there's a whole heap of other issues. Um, 
that the, the handwriting piece is, is a big one. The missing, uh, you know, missing certain pieces of key data is, a, is another one. Um, and yeah, customers going rogue. We see a lot of customers go rogue and write their own T's and C's in and cross out 30 day terms or 14 day terms to make it 30 for themselves. So many little things can be done as we touched on in the first point when, when it's a PDF or even a Word document, which is even more sort of dangerous, which we're seeing a lot of. And, and I think, I think <laughs> Luke, we have to mention here is that oftentimes customers are filling out their applications in good faith and they think they've done a great job um, and that can end, um, that can create some frustration later down the line, which we'll definitely get to. Um, point three, uh, in, in terms of the admin required to get a assigned credit back to the business, um, it often requires scanning. And, and this is a real breaking point of that process. Um, because customers generally think they very often have access to a scanner, or if they do, it's, it's a page by page piece. Um, so quite often here we see that they just don't return the form. Maybe if they've downloaded something from website and they stop because it's too hard to scan and they might have gone somewhere else, you won't even know that they were interested. So there is a bit of there is a bit of a, a gap there in terms of um, your opportunity to maximize your customer base. Um, Luke, you know, again coming back to you, I've seen a few things where people take a million photos and send them back to the to the business. Is is that is that common? That is that's very common, George. But I mean, the, the one thing is this point can, can turn off certain customers. You know, if we're talking about, uh, you know, meeting customer ex expectations in this day and age, a lot are turned off when it comes to this scanning stage. Um, now, in the event that they're not turned off and they still want to um, proceed, I call it the, the terrible trifecta. And hopefully this resonates with a lot of people. Um, this is where your customer will take a photo of the paper form that they filled out with their illegible handwriting and send it to you either with pages missing or out of order. You have to figure out where they're all up to. That's what I call the terrible trifecta of um, paper onboarding. Um, but other than those key things that you mentioned, George, and, and, and the terrible trifecta, um, it is a turn off for, for customers if they don't have access to, to easy scanning facilities and they have to revert to using their you know, mobile phone to send images through. Luke, just as a continuation to that, this is before the business has even done the credit check. So say steps one and three have been completed and it gets back to the, the credit manager, the accounts, accounts receivable manager, and they're reviewing the application. What are some of the what are some of the challenges they're coming across? Well, uh, straight away, I mean in these first three three stages, um, you know, the customer could be filling in, you know incorrect information, i.e. ABN, ACN data. They could be trading as a cancelled entity that you, you don't quite know. Um, you know, a lot of the customers that come to us, I'm probably going to say 90% of the customers that come to us typically won't perform a commercial credit check on an entity to actually, to actually see whether they're credit worthy on, in the first place. Um, so um, you can go through a whole process with, with a customer and then get to the end and typically people will do a, an ASIC check or perhaps an ABR check, um, but they're not getting the full picture. Um, so whilst um, some may be using a PDF or might have an online form at the moment, if there's not an, an accompanying credit check being done, you are leaving yourself exposed um, because there are customers out there that continue to trade insolvent. There are customers out there who, um, uh, doing a, a fair bit of phoenixing where they're creating new business after new business after new business. Um, but, you know, for me, the biggest challenge uh, yeah, in this space is really knowing whether the individual or the, the company that's coming on board is, is credit worthy. Yeah. And, and that, that brings us kind of to the next point, Luke. And if, if, they, if they figure out that they're not sure because something's been put out in... Um, and they need to go back and customer a new application. Basically, points one or four need to be repeated, um, which is really frustrating for the customer if they think they've done the right thing and have gone through that that quite convoluted manual process of printing 
scanning and, and sending back. Um, point five is where we see a lot of um, credit, credit professionals come under pressure, um, either from the customer who, who complains about the process or from quite often an internal sales team who relying on getting an order through and advertising revenue. I mean, it just puts pressure on the credit professional to make a decision, which, which is potentially compromising the business process or, or further to take the customer and the sales team, um, which, which, we, which we see. Um, Luke, anything else to add on to that? Oh, look, uh, look the, the notes that I have here are around, you know, a lot of the customers we speak to, you touched on it earlier, we, we deal with, with customers from mums and dads businesses all the way through to ASX listed entities. And um, most of the people that, you know, that, that we speak with on a day-to-day -day basis are extremely time poor. You know, they don't have time to be going back and forth with the customer. Um, hey, you missed a, a digit in your ABN. Hey, you didn't give me that third trade reference that we want. The time, the, the time is probably the biggest challenge for a lot of businesses in, in the whole decide and repeat phase. Um, people just don't have the time to be going back and forth. And generally, um, people in accounts receivable are wearing multiple hats. You know, they're the office admin, they're, they're the AR, <laughs> they chase debt. They're multitasking so much already that having to then go back and forth for, for credit apps um, can be a really time consuming exercise. Um, and that's obviously a fr frustration for, for yourself as a, as a business. It's a frustration for your customer who wants to get started ASAP. And no doubt people in HR and, and sales within your business, uh, there's probably a little bit of tension there created if sales are wanting you to hurry up and set up their account. So um, time is the biggest challenge in that space I've, I've found. That was all that space for me, George. Just to finish this off, um, a couple of points together. They are, they are related. Um, point six and seven, if you do get to the end of the process, um, quite often you will save that, that application, whether we save it in an Outlook inbox, um, saved in Windows Explorer, which is extremely apt. And it does put you in a bit of a situation if the person who manages that process moves or leaves the business um, and quite often we see that in, in point seven where if you do have a loss and you do need to refer to those that credit application it's hard to find it might be incomplete because you've rushed it up because you're under pressure or you just just can't read it the ABN might be incorrect um, you might be dealing with a trust and have no corporate trustee so those two points um, just before we jump in into the demo um, really critical to to make that uh, streamlined and, and and manageable process. Luke, anything there before we jump into the demo? I know, I know we're kind of running a little bit short on time. Yeah, very conscious of, of time. Um, I think we can certainly touch on that throughout the demo because um, part of what we're sort of showing will, will solve a, a number of these issues, if not all, uh, that we're looking at. So I might talk to that during the demo. Um, are we right to crack on? Was there a poll that we wanted to ask at this stage? Let's have a look. Um, the poll is just around whether you'd like to be contacted, um, just with some further information around uh, Apply Easy. Um, I know we haven't shown it to you as yet, but certainly uh, what we're about to show you will go into the detail uh, of, of what the online credit application process looks like for you. So we'll just give that a couple of moments um, for the poll and uh, that's it. That's the last question for the po from, from a poll point of view. Um, so we'll crack straight into the demo um, after this. Great. Okay, so what you're looking at now uh, is what I would call a, a standard out of the box solution that we can, we can offer our customers. Um, You'll notice that it's generic colour and branding, and you know, for me, I do call this a you know a typical example. And for the sake of the exercise today, I'm going to run through what a what a typical online um, credit application would look like. Um, just a few things to note: a lot of customers that come to us um, either don't have a current 
formal credit application process, some have a paper-based application process that, that needs fixing in certain stages, um, uh, and then others just want to completely revamp what they're doing um, to, uh, to modernise their, their process. So um, if you were to um, create an online credit application through us, this would obviously be in your colours and branding. Everything that we're looking at here right now is fully customisable. Um, and importantly, you'd have your own hyperlink. So this would eliminate the need to send out a Word doc, send out a PDF doc. Um, a lot of customers will use that hyperlink on their website. They'll create a button. They'll put it in their marketing collateral. Um, it's, a, it's a really simple way to now onboard people by simply sending them a, a, a link um, to your online credit application. Before I sort of click on further, it's, it's really important to note that this online credit application is fully optimised. So what you'll see here is the, um, the text changing as I uh, move the cursor left and right. And it just means, it just means the application is fully optimised. It can be used on a mobile, a, a tablet, a laptop, a desktop. Um, touching on customer ex expectations earlier, customers can access this wherever. Uh, they can apply on the go, which is typically the customers you're dealing with. Um, so it makes them really easy to uh, it makes it really easy for them to fill it out quickly um, uh, while on the go. I'm just going to enter some dummy information to be able to sort of proceed through. But straight off the bat, customers are able to either enter a, a business name, an ABN, an ACN. It is almost impossible for them to get this step wrong, um, which is probably the most important step in your process: onboarding the correct entity. And, and, and there's no, this leaves no room for chance to, for customers to, to miss a digit or spell something the wrong way. Um, as you can see, all of the options drop down for me once I enter a particular one, and this is the one I'm going to, to use as the example today. Um, as you can see, once it populates the, the entity, it also pulls through the ABN and the ACN because we are pulling credit bureau data from Creditor Watch, which is really important they're getting a credit check done on them straight off the bat. You can enter things like trading name, registered address, you can override and add billing and delivery address if you wish. Uh, one thing I will note straight away as well is when I go to press next, it doesn't let me. So the introduction of mandatory fields. Gone are the days where customers can skip through key parts of your application, not fill it out, cross it out, change it, now you can be in a position where you're fully in control and customers cannot proceed un unless they provide mandatory, mandatory data for you. Um, so in this case, there's the drop down for the address. I'm able to choose that and move through the app. Um, typically, we'll create a, a primary contact as an option. Uh, that's generally followed up by an accounts payable contact. Um, as you can see, I'm just entering dummy data. The accounts payable contact, again, um, you know, for, for the sake of the exercise, a lot of other customers might request other things like purchase order contacts, etc. Yes, we can fully customise that for you. Um, the save and resume later option um, is a powerful one for two reasons. Uh, obviously, if your customers are on the go and are busy, they can simply click that, which provides them a, a link that they can email to themselves. Um, but also for for customers who, who you know, take phone calls, um, they can easily fill this out on behalf of a customer, click save and resume later, and then on send it to that customer that you've just been speaking with on the phone for them to complete and electronically execute the document. Um, so that's a really powerful tool. The drop down section, the director section here, given that you've entered the ABN at the beginning of the application, the ACN as well, um, it's able to auto populate who the directors are of the entity. So again, this is um, eliminating that, that whole illegible handwriting piece and it's collecting information on directors. Uh, you can actually add as many or as little um, directors as you like in an application process. Um, typically, I've, I've found a lot of businesses that, apply, that are applying for credit will generally use one or two key directors within their business. Um, so we do provide that option. Um, and we can also collect things like phone numbers and email addresses from directors, uh, which I will note is very important in the event that you want only directors executing 
your online credit application documents. So I'll touch on that shortly as well. Um, we've added this field at the bottom just as an example for you, but if you do have other documents that you require uploading as part of your process, this is where we can sort of create a, a custom field for you to be able to upload. So ignore the guarantee section because we can actually electronically sign that, but it's more or less there to show you that there's that capability there if you do want to upload, um, if you do want your customers to upload documents as part of the, the onboarding process. Uh, finally, the credit limit details. Um, so I'm just going to enter some dummy data again. And believe it or not, we're, we're done. So we are now at the conclusion of the application. Your customer gets to the end and they're able to review very quickly what they have just filled out. Um, so in the event that they may have made a mistake, they can simply click edit at the top, which will bring them back to that section to complete the data properly. Typically, the T's and C's would then fall under here. Uh, and then the customer, who is the authorised individual on behalf of the company, would then fill in their details. Um, to finalise the application, they confirm that they're a person authorised and then they, finally, then they finally click confirm. Now a couple of things happen from here. Once the application is submitted, um, a PDF actually goes to the customer um, for electronic execution. And what does that look like? On screen here, you can see uh, that you can click to begin, um, which is again, the whole credit application that the customer has just filled out, all of the details that they have just entered, they're able to review all of this. And importantly, in black and white, the terms and conditions are there for them. So you would have seen in the, um, uh, in the previous page that I was on that there's the terms and conditions would fall underneath where they could click on it and have a look. Well, in this case, they can't miss it here. Uh, and this is where they would typically electronically execute the document um, by giving electronic signature, full name, position, um, and submitting. Now, I've already done that, just like in a cooking show when they're cooking something, something I've prepared earlier, I've already done this um, to be able to show you what that looks like on the back end. Um, so one other thing happens, a notification goes to yourself, um, the business, that a new application has come in as well. So all parties are being updated along the way. Now we jump into the back end. So you're the business, you've just sent them your hyperlink, they filled it out, they're ready to go, you've got an alert, you can now jump into the back end to review their application. So what does that look like? When you're in the portal, this is typically what uh, a busy um, Fly Easy application inbox would look like. Straight away, you can see a whole heap of applications in here. And I'll just work on one as an example line item for you. So the PepsiCo example, um, as we work across, you can see who the applicant is, you can see the credit limit that they've gone for. Uh, we can set up a feature uh, which we call a, a recommendation. So there's three things that can happen, um, approve, reject or refer. Now obviously if the application is um, giving a recommendation for approval, it means the commercial credit file is squeaky clean and good to go. If it rejects, well it's the complete opposite. They're probably insolvent, they probably got court actions, defaults, all kinds of different things. So the system is recommending that you reject. And then you'll get a lot of customers that see the refer recommendation in there. And the refer recommendation can be through a number of things. And um, it might be that they're going for a larger credit application, uh, credit um, amount. It might be that they've got multiple directors that have adverse against them, relate bad adverse related entities, et cetera. So it's a bit of a stopgap for you, a recommendation um, only, um, but it certainly provides good guidance for those that are uh, wanting to move quickly. No decisions have been made on this application as yet, and we can jump in here and, and review it right now if you like. Um, the update button on the right is basically when, you, when you're ready to make a decision, which, we will, which we'll get into. So now I'll view the application. Um, and this is where you can review everything that they have just filled out. Uh, and I'll work through these sections with you at the top. Overview, responses, e-signature and files. So important to note that there's an accompanying, accompanying credit report that comes with every application um, um, entered into your Apply Easy. Really important because there's a time and date stamp attached to it. So as an example, if I was to download that, I'd be able to review the credit report of that entity scroll through and get a very quick understanding of 
I guess, my risk. <laughs> you know, I can already see they've got three defaults as an example, but what's important to note is the time and date stamp, uh, because who knows, if you're looking to onboard a customer and perhaps you haven't looked at the new apps that have come in over the period of a week, um, seven days later, their credit situation may have changed. So um, yes, this is a snapshot in time, but it's important to note that you can also review the live credit file as well, just to be doubly sure. The decision update here on the right is where you can easily update the decision, uh, which I'll get into shortly. You can review the responses given by the client. So all that dummy data, as you saw that I entered, um, the, re the director information, um, the credit detail, and the confirmation information, the e-signature, um, so I look, I will, I will touch on this very briefly because obviously I showed you what that looks like when the customer gets the document to execute, but this is where it would fall. So you have an ongoing record of it. Um, so when I click into the e-signature, I can do a number of things. I can download all documents. So all the, all the documents that the customer looked at and then signed, you can download here. Um, if you wanted to go down to a granular level, you could download the certificate, um, which is quite simply the time and date stamp, the IP address, it's tracking everything in relation to the application. Um, so you have a certificate of completion that you can provide, um, possibly for legal reasons in future, should this ever be questioned in terms of an electronic signature standpoint. I know that's a little bit granular, but I just wanted to make sure because e-signature is one of the most important things um, when it comes to uh, onboarding new customers. We need to make sure that they are electronically agreeing um, and, and, and having that time and date and IP address stamp is extremely important. Finally, you can go into the files section. So if you did want to add more files as part of the application, let's say that you had further discussion via email or um, other signed agreements or anything that you wanted to add into the application, you could simply upload a new file here. Um, but that generally summarises what we're looking at um, for each typical application that comes through. When you're ready to approve them, you would simply click, click update decision. And if I was in a position where I wanted to approve them, I would simply click approve. I could make any notes. I could add an account ID. We can see what the requested amount was. And then we can see what the approved amount is by, by writing that in and saying, look, we're gonna give you that credit limit that you're asking for. Probably the last thing that I'd like to touch on once you have saved this status and you have approved them, application status updated successfully, the customer then receives an email, which is again completely customizable, basically saying you have been approved for the, the credit limit that you have requested. Um, so that's the process in a nutshell. I'll bring us back to the application tab um, because there's just a couple of other things I'd like to touch on. Um, one is around some of these labels that you're seeing. So for this particular line item, you'll see that there's a credit limit of, is that 500,000 being requested? Um, a lot of businesses do have, you know, hierarchy of controls around credit limit requested. So if, you're, if your CFO or someone at a higher level needs to approve on an application, we can set up a function where that application goes directly to the CFO so they can approve. So you don't actually have to go to the CFO to say, hey, can you please approve this for me? It just makes that much easier um, for, for the onboarding process when there are multiple stakeholders involved in, in, the, in the approval process. Um, the tags are also really important in the way that, you know, I, I deal with a number of customers that have multiple markets. So if you want to know that an application has come into the Queensland or the New South Wales or the Victorian office, well, we can status label them accordingly. So when you jump into your inbox and you want to filter, you can easily filter by um, New South Wales or Queensland state, um, et cetera. The last one, um, the hyperlink, which I touched on in the app, if you ever need that link, um, it's, it's, it's easily accessible through this, through this button here. Again, this is your own unique hyperlink to your credit application that you share with your customers. Um, and again, to reiterate, you can put that on your website, create it as a button, put it in all your marketing collateral um, in order for customers to be able to onboard very quickly with you. Have I missed anything, George? I think you've done a pretty comprehensive wrap. Thank you, Luke. Um, and just to acknowledge, we, we've had a lot of questions. Um, 
and and some some other comments as well um, around some of the sound quality. So I apologise for that if, if it's if it's been detrimental. Um, but we will get back to you all um, and, and answer your questions personally because there were a lot. Um, just just to wrap up, I, th I think we're out of time. Sorry to go over as well. Um, but yeah, just a really quick summary before before we let you all go. Um, what we wanted to make it really clear today was that your your clients need and expect that digital experience now. They they want to do things quickly and via their device and on the run. Um, Luke Luke didn't mention it specifically, but we have tried to make this application as this product as easy and as cost effective to set up. So we do have predefined templates which you can get pretty much off the shelf. Um, we can make slight customizations based on your brand and, and business and have that set up um, extremely quickly. Um, and obviously Luke did show quite a lot, but your credit application is built into the process as an, and, and is included for you. So again, simple, um, easy, and completes all the due diligence you need. Luke, just to finish, I think there's one more slide and we'll let people get on with their day. Um, Look, I've touched on affordable and, and kind of best practice already, um, but just to let you know around the low maintenance piece, um, this is all web hosted. Um, we've got all the relevant uh, privacy and security certifications, um, and we have a full support team um, in our Australian head office to help you on the way developing and supporting any, any problems you might have with the app or changes you might need on the app moving forward. So sorry to rush at the end there, but it was really important we get through um, the application and give you guys a great feel in terms of how it works and what it does. Um, and all those who ask questions, we will we will be in touch. And uh, thanks for your participation. And thank you, Luke. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for your time.